Before we get into our training video, if by chance you found this video as a recommended video on YouTube, this training video is actually part of an extensive Corel Draw for Beginners training series from AdvancedTShirts.com. We have developed dozens of videos and we also have available on our website downloadable work along files that you can work with in Corel Draw while you're working through the training videos. Easily the best and fastest way to learn. If these videos are helpful to you, please take a second to add a like to the video and subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can be notified when we upload new video content. And of course, in the comment section below, you can post your questions or your Corel Draw video tutorial requests. In this session, we'll continue with our vector tracing tutorial and we'll call this session two. I'm going to trace the Chili's logo. Now, whenever I get into a tracing project or any graphic design project, the first thing that I think about is shapes and shape tools and how I'm going to make the shapes. Am I going to use the Bezier tool, the rectangle tool? What tools am I going to use to make the shape with? You can see here that I've used the rectangle tool here and some lines and the Bezier tool over here to create all these lines. And I created an arc here for the C. And I took all of that, converted the outlines to object, and then I set up the little chili pepper up here next to the S for the Chili's logo. We'll zoom in and we'll see how I would start here. First thing I would start with is the C. And for the C, I'd start with the ellipse tool. I'd come here to the center of that, holding down shift and control, creating a perfect circle from the center, going into the center of the C, as you can see here. Here's the center, and then at the top here and the bottom of the segment here. Then I'm going to go to arc mode. Then I'll come down here, bring this node and slide it right up to right there because we know from our tutorial on the outlines that this is going to wrap around here as a rounded end cap. And I'll do the same thing down here, left click, drag this right to about there. And that tutorial on the outlines and lines covers this extensively with very good information about working with the lines and outlines in Corel Draw. And then you'll understand why I just did this with these nodes in the arc. Then I'll go to my object properties bar. Let's take a look at four, not even close. Let's take a look at 12. 12 looks good. We'll go to our end cap and we'll round that. And you can see how that worked. And then you can go back and just pull this down a hair. Now that changed that to pi. I want to go to arc. That'll be fine. And then I'll bring this up just a little bit here. And there's the C. Now when I hit control shift Q, I'll convert that to an object. And you'll see if I go to view and wireframe that I had those points here because I knew that the round end cap of the line segment was going to extend. Now, if I wanted to make this even more accurate, I could go in and do some tweaking, but for the sake of the video, I think this will be just fine. I'll go back to view and enhanced. Now here I'm going to make a line segment for the H. So I can go to my Bezier tool. I'll just Drop one here. Once again, we want to be round in the center because we're going to have that rounded end cap. So we want it probably right about there. I'm going to hold down control and come down here. And that'll be perfectly straight right there with the Bezier tool. Next, I want to work with the rectangle tool. So I'll go over here to the toolbox, left click, get the rectangle tool. I want to be in the center of the line here and here, and then I'm going to round the edges of the rectangle. I want that to go around the center and here. So I'm going to be kind of like coming off of here and then coming over this way here to the center there. Left click, hold down, pull that well above 
so that when I round the corners of the rectangle, it'll be above the top of the L where the rounded corners end. Then I'll come down, left click as I change to the shape tool, hold that, and curve that around. Go to the center point and bring that down just a little bit. That's nicely in the center. I'll come in here to the stretch handle, push this in a hair, and that will be good. Then with that selected, control Q on my keyboard to convert to curves. Hit my spacebar to go back to the pick tool. Double click here. I'm going to bring a node right here about in the center. Double click that node. Bring another one up here, right where that rounded end cap would be on that line segment so that I cover that, that right about there. Now, as I said, there's a tutorial on the outlines and the end caps, and you want to get that if you didn't see it, and you'll see why I'm doing this. Now, here I'm going to right-click on this and select Break Apart. I'm going to select this node, right-click, and select Break Apart. Now that I've done that, I can right-click here and select Break Curve Apart. And let's see what we've got here. And now we've got this line segment perfect. I can delete this. Then for my eye, I'll just select this line segment. Left click, holding down control to constrain. Right click, center that. Come up to the stretch handle. Push that down to right about there. And I'll use this eye for this eye when I get done. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is work here. I can see that the handle comes off in this direction, then into here. I'll use the Bezier tool for that, and I'll just come over here, and then I'll come here and lay down another segment. Hit the space bar to go to the pick tool, which will go to a shape. I'll double click on this, delete that, right click here, make this a curve. And then what I want to do is double click this to go to the shape tool. And is this a curve? Yes, it is. Okay. And I'll bring this and shape it to the center with the Bezier tool. Kind of like that. And I might want to left click, hold down, constrain, and bring this down a little bit here. Pull up that way and follow that shape. And I'll zoom in. And I'm happy with that. Now I can select these, holding down shift, go to my object properties, change that to a 12 point, and we can see that. Come over here, my end caps, to round, and we've pretty well nailed it. Now with my pick tool, I'll just double click on this to change the shape tool. Constrain, I'll bring that up a little. All this is set, same thing here. Bring that up to right about there. And that'll be fine. With all of these line segments selected, I've got four objects here, even though they're just line segments. I can go to Object, Convert Outline to Object, or I'll just click off and hit Control shift q And we can see everything has now been converted to shapes or curve shapes from the outlines on the vector line segments. Take all of these, I'll go to the pick tool, and then I'll just weld them. Then I'll give them no fill and a red outline because I want to make some adjustments here. Double click to go to the shape tool, left click on this node, pull this up, holding down control to constrain it. Lasso these three nodes with the shape tool delete those and then I'll make some adjustments here pull this up into here a little bit now left click and pull down here and then I'll pull up there a bit and that'll make that adjustment come here pull down holding down constraint to keep that line lasso these two nodes that should smooth that segment right out and it pretty well did I'm going to pull some of this back in here 
on this control handle down into here. Scroll up and I'll pull some of this back down into there. And I'd say that's good enough. So this is the H, the I, and the L. Now for the top of the eye, I'll go to the ellipse tool. I'll just push forward on my center mouse wheel to zoom in. I'll left click and pull that down right about to there. I'll come here to the center, click change to the rotation and skew mode. I'll skew this over this way. I'll skew this down this way. Go back to the scale and stretch mode, bring that size down a little bit and then just move that from the center point using the center point to do the move and that'll be my eye or the top of my eye. I'll hit the space bar, go back to the pick tool. I'm going to come down here, double click on this section. I'm going to take all of the nodes in the eye, select them, hit control C and then hit control V. That will duplicate that eye even though I copied and pasted. What I did is I just copied and pasted line segments and nodes by selecting all of the nodes and line segments. I'll hold down shift, select the top of the eye, left click, hold down, right click one time to duplicate, control to constrain, and I'll bring that right over here and duplicate it. Now I have the two eyes. Next, I'm going to start working on the S. And the S, I could do a couple of different ways. And I think I'll do that with the ellipse and then maybe tweak it with the shape tool. So I'll get the ellipse. Do I want the ellipse or the rectangle tool? Looking at that shape, I think rectangle is a better way to go. I'm going to come here from the center point and pull a rectangle out just like that. Then I'm going to round the edges, and you can see that fitting right in there. I'm going to bring this in here a little bit, bring this up, and this looks good, and I'll tweak this at the end. I'm going to go Control-Q to convert to curves, space bar to go back to the Pick tool, double-click to go to the Shape tool, come here, double-click, drop a node, and I'll do the same thing here, double-click and drop a node. Right click, break apart, do the same from this node, right click, break apart. Now go back to my pick tool with the space bar, right click on the object, break curve apart, select this. I can delete that. Then I'll take this from the top stretch handle, start pulling down, right click one time to duplicate it, right into this area here where I'd want it and then I'm going to mirror that vertically. So we're very close on the shape there. I'll select both of these holding down shift and I'm going to weld them into one line. Now looking at the S I want to bring some curve in here so from the pick tool I'll double click on that curve or line or line segments bring this node right to about there right click here and select to curve and give that its curve right through there. Then I'll do the same thing down here, left click, hold down, bring this right about to there. Right click to curve and pull this down just like that. Now here I got two nodes, I'm gonna delete one of them, same thing here, double nodes, don't want those. Clean that up a little bit, you can see what happened there. So I'll hit Control Z and go back. And let's see what's happening here. Ah, these two are not connected. So I've got some line segments that are not connected. I'm going to bring this over here and I can see what's happening there. I'll actually double click here, select, break apart, and then delete this node. Zoom in here and see what I'm dealing with. I've got a node and a control arm there. Then here I have and I'll double click and delete that and now you can take these nodes and just drop them on top of each other and they'll come together and combine. 
and then I can just smooth that out or change that to a smooth node state. So we fix that and there's the S. We'll go to our object property manager outline and we'll change this to 12 point and we'll go to the round end cap. Now here we can left click and bring this over a little bit. Same thing here, bring some of this out this way and tweak that S shape right in. Might wanna bring some of this around this way. And I'd say that's good enough for the S and I'll hit Control Shift Q and that will convert the outline to an object. And we could do some more tweaking here if we wanted. If I wanted to lasso these three nodes and bring this back this way, I could pull that back with the shape tool and really dial things in here. If I wanted to bring some of this up this way and tweak that a little bit, I could. Now I'm saving a lot of time because I'm not doing things with the Bezier tool. I'm using shapes and convert outline to object. I'll hit my space bar to go back to the pick tool. No fill, give that a red outline. I can come back in here, double click with the shape tool and bring this in to get a double click here, delete that, that'll smooth that segment out. Lasso both of these nodes, pull this in this way just a bit and just getting very close to the original S. So now we have all of the letters completed. We can take all of the letters, go to the pick tool, I could have just hit my space bar, but we'll select everything here, come up, weld, then we can fill that with a green. We'll go to the pick tool, get the green from the logo, come over here and fill that. And there is the text. Now for the chili pepper, you can see ellipse here, ellipse here, ellipse here. So I'm not going to try and do that with the Bezier tool. I'll do that with the ellipse tool. So I'll come to the ellipse tool, come down here and just start creating from the center going up into that shape. Now this ellipse really looks like something that's going to have to come and start like this, a shape kind of like that. And I'll bring this down a bit with the stretch handle and I'm going to duplicate this over here. And I'll create another ellipse here just to get and knock everything out from that. Then I'm going to Go to my pick tool. I could have hit my space bar. I'm going to select all of these objects holding down shift. And the last is going to be the ellipse for the top of the pepper. I'm going to come up and click on back minus front. And you can see that trim. Now with the pick tool, I'll double click on this. I'm going to zoom in. I'll double click to create a node here. Double click to create a node here. Delete this node. And then I'll pull these control arms back because they're overlapping to get the shape right there. And I can pull this up a little bit and that there. And I can bring this down like that. Now we're looking at that and that looks good. I'm going to do the same thing here. Now I'm not really sure what's going on, but I'll delete this here and smooth that out. These control arms are overlapping, so I'll pull this back, holding down control to constrain that. I can do the same thing here, hold down control and constrain that. I'll come over here, double click to create a node, double click to delete this node, come here, hold down control to constrain the control arm when I move it, bring that up and do the same thing here. Now there is the green cap. Now looking at the stem at the top of the pepper, I think I'll use the Bezier tool for that. So I'll we'll get my Bezier tool. Just going to left click and pull out that way. Come up here, left click, pull, get that curve, hit the C key, change this to a cusp. Bring this in because I don't want the control arms overlapping each other. Left click here, give that a bit of an arch, hit the C key, come back in this way. Now I'm going to come right down into about 
here, hit the C key and then come over, click on the starting node to end that. And hit the space bar, go back to the pick tool, double click on this, bring this in a little bit right there. Now I know there's a section here that comes in, so, and this I'm going to look at and see if I can smooth this out just a bit more here at the top with the control arms and the control handles. So I'm at the space bar again, go back to the pick tool, get the bezier. I was hoping I'd get the bezier tool, but I didn't. I'm going to left click here and then come down into here and pull that out that way because I know that there's an area in here that's knocked out. I'll go to view wireframe. Very important. I want to make sure that this is overlapping. And it is. And I might want to hit the space bar, go to my pick tool, double click on that, change to the shape tool, bring this out a little bit more and give that a bit more of a curve right there. Go back to view and enhanced. Go to the Smart Fill Tool. We have an extensive tutorial on this early in the training series. And you can watch that to see how this works, but I'll come in here and just click right there. Now with that in front, I'm going to select my cap, shift, come here, go to back minus front, and that'll knock that out. I'll delete this line segment, and I'll take this bezier shape I made, hold down shift, select the cap, and I'll weld those. Then I'll double click and go back to the shape tool. I'm looking here and I might want to smooth this out just a little bit. Okay, so there is the cap of the pepper. Now in the future, we'll get into the contour tool, but I'm going to create a contour around this that I'll be able to trim the bottom of the pepper with. So I'll go to the drop shadow tool, come down to contour, left click, hold down. I can start to drag out and go right to there and you can see I'm going to be able to set that up so that I can just trace off around for the pepper and then use the contour to knock that out. Go back to the pick tool. I'll have to go up here to get that. Come to the outer edge of the contour, right click and select break contour group apart. I'll get my bezier tool Make sure I'm up in here, come down through here, pull this way, pull down that way, not too much, come down in here, and then pull up through here, do the same thing here, and then right up into there, hit the C key, change that to a cusp, and then follow along, don't really need to, I can just click off there and select OK. Now I've got my pepper shape, double click on that. If I want to do any adjustments, I can. I might bring this in a little bit here and that over there, etc., and dial that in. But now I have the pepper shape on top of the contour. So I'll select the pepper shape, which is already selected. I'll hold down shift. And this time I'll come to front minus back. And there's my pepper shape, or the red shape. And then I need to create the highlight here. For the highlight, I'll just use the Bezier tool again. And I am moving slowly for the sake of the video. Pull that down this way. And we'll come in here just a little bit. Don't want to go too much. Pull that out and round it. Come back up this way. And we could have used the shape here as well. But the Bezier tool worked just fine. Come around this way and around that way and close that. Space bar back to the pick tool, double click on the highlight object, zoom in and see if there's anything we need to work with here. Now this doesn't look very smooth here. A little trick, I can double click and drop a node here, double click, delete this node. See how that smooths out? I bring that control arm in a little bit, bring this over here this way. Same thing here, not very smooth. Drop a node here, delete this node, and that smooths out. And I'll delete this node also. And that looks pretty good. So that would be our pepper.
Now to fill that, once again, I'll go to the eyedropper tool and I'll click on the red, come over and fill that. And looking here, I just realized a little detail I may have missed. That would be that little highlight on the top of the pepper. And I'll zoom in there. For that, I'll just get the Bezier tool and I'll just create three lines. Start there, left click, left click, and then go back to the starting node and close that. Hit the space bar, go back to the pick tool, double click on this, go to the shape tool. Select a node, hit control A to select all of the nodes, come up here and convert the line segments to curves. Now I'm just going to take this line segment, left click, hold down, pull that out that way. Do the same thing here, I'll do the same thing down here at the bottom. Get that and pull that up to match the roundness here or the curve here. I'll zoom out now and hmm, just go to the pick tool. I'll grab this green eye, right click, hold down, release, copy, fill here. That gets me to fill. Select this and the highlight on the pepper. Fill that with white. Zoom out lasso select everything i'm going to get my bitmap there because i didn't lock it and i should have done that and that's why you want to lock your bitmaps but at this point it's not really going to matter but i'll hit Control z right click and i will lock that now so that i can lasso everything and not worry about grabbing the bitmap by accident i'll right click to take the outlines off i can see that now I'll go to View and Wireframe. If you're in CorelDRAW 2019, this may or may not work. Now this, I'm going to click off, double click here. I'm going to come down here and smooth this out. Double click this to drop a node on that line segment. Double click this node to delete it. Take this control arm, hold down control to constrain it and pull it back just to smooth that out. Probably do the same thing over here and then delete that. Select this. We can zoom in, pushing forward on the center mouse wheel. Hold down control and pull this control arm down, smooth that out. And that looks pretty good. Go back to view and enhanced. And there is our logo trace. Space bar to go back to the pick tool, right click on the bitmap, unlock that, bring that up over there and we can see we've got the trace of the Chili's logo. Now I can go back in here and double click on this shape, maybe I want to smooth that out a little bit more even just like that. And from what I can see here this all looks good and that's how I would have traced the Chili's logo. Now this was yet another fairly long session but we're learning the basics and fundamentals of things like tracing and I'm taking my time as I'm doing these tutorials so that if you're new you can work along. We'll wrap here and in our next session we'll take a look at tracing the lion head icon.